Okay, so thank you, Hala, for this introduction. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as just mentioned, I'll be presenting the results of one component of the scale study, which is the school neighborhood food environment component. I will start with the background and objective for this component. So, uh, as you know, food environment, as it includes a multitude of food options available to people in their environment, it can influence food choices, purchasing behaviors, and dietary intake, all of which have implication on the development of uh, obesity and other uh, non communicable diseases. Now, for children, food environment around schools can play a key role in shaping children's food consumption because children encounter many food exposures on their daily trajectory to and from schools and they are more autonomous in their food choices there. Now, while there is considerable evidence from high-income countries on school neighborhood food environment, less evidence exists in low and income countries. And this is why the study aims to fill this research gap. It is the first study to assess school neighborhood food environment in the Middle East and North Africa region, so the MUNA region, using geospatial methods. It's also the first study to look at the association between food environment and children with status in this region. So the objective of this study are twofold. First, it's basically to describe the food environment around schools using geospatial methods. And the second is to investigate whether there is an association between school neighborhood food environment and children with status. So moving to the methods. So how did we assess our exposure, which is food environment? Uh, so within food environment, we assess retailers and outdoor food advertisement. So here, when I use the term food, it also includes beverages. So food retailers include all food or drink establishments, such as eating places, market, and mobile vendors. And outdoor food advertisement included all advertisements, promo all advertisements promoting a food or drink products, such as billboard, logos, or storefront advertisements. Now we assess two dimensions, which are availability and accessibility of food retailers and advertisements. We show them at these are the two dimensions that are widely used in the literature and are among the recommended measures of food uh, environment. Now availability was measured as count or density count per area of the different types of food retailers and food advertisements. And accessibility was measured as proximity or distance from school to the nearest food retailer. So we use this matrix because um, this is how availability and accessibility is usually measured and operationalized in the food environment literature. And this is in line with the conceptual framework that was developed by Terminal Attack. Now, how did we define our neighborhoods? So we decided to use a buffer metric. We opted for an 800 meter road network buffer around schools. So why 800 meter? Because this is equivalent to a 10 minute walking distance for an average school child, which is a logical walking duration for children. So this is the um, a, a sample uh, map where we can see the school in red and we can see the 800 meter buffer around the school. As you can see, it's not a full circle, it's, uh, it's a polygon because we're talking about road network distance and not a straight line distance. Now for the protocol, um, we actually, to be able to map the retailers and advertisements uh, within the buffer, we conducted a ground truthing, which means that we conducted an in-person mapping with direct observation and measurements where we had data collectors walking on the street and collecting direct visa data. So why did we conduct the ground truthing? Because uh, while well, there are no commercial or governmental lists on food retailers that are publicly available in Tunisia and Lebanon, and plus, field observation is considered the gold standard to document food exposures in neighborhoods. Um, now, as mentioned, we had data collector that were working uh, within the 800 meter buffer. They were given mobile phone and we asked them to collect the geographic coordinates and picture, as well as to assign a typology for each food retailer and advertisement observed or available within the buffer. So this was done using uh, an application called Survey123 that was downloaded on their mobile phone. Um, this is a screenshot of the application where they could basically data collect the pictures and take the GPS application. And this is also a screenshot of uh, the checklist that was used by data collector to assign the typology. So we had one checklist for Lebanon and one for Arab Now regarding typology, 
uh, it was really quite challenging to categorize the different food retailers because of the lack of cross context equivalence and food retailer concept. So, for example, this is a picture of a Lebanese bakery. So, Lebanese bakeries um, usually sell traditional salt to fast food, and sometimes they can sell pizza. And as you can see in the picture, we have here the Arabic uh, white uh, pita bread, but they can also sell carbonated beverages. So these are considered bakeries in the Lebanese context, but they might be closer to fast food restaurants in other contexts. So a bakery in Lebanon is not necessarily equivalent to a bakery in other contexts, and this basically hinders comparability across studies. Also, after classifying this retailer based on the typology, we wanted to further categorize them based on a hazmat level. However, there is no consensus on a classification system to categorize food retailers as healthy or unhealthy. And basically, this is why we developed our own typology that is derived from the NOVA classification system. So for those who are not familiar with the NOVA classification system, it's a system that classifies food into four groups uh, based on the extent of food processing level. And uh, why did we opt for the NOVA classification? Basically, because some evidence show that food processing levels might be a major driver of childhood obesity rather than the nutrient contents of food items. Um, so more specifically, we followed a two-step approach uh, to categorize uh, retailers and advertisements. I just want to mention that classification of food exposure was done in a very methodic and rigorous way with extensive discussion among the members of the research team. So I will present here an overview, but I will be more than happy to further discuss at the end of the presentation. So first, retailers were uh, categorized by type according to context-specific checklists, uh, so one for Tunisia and one for Lebanon, that were developed by the research team. So for example, food retailers were classified as kiosks or traditional corner shops or restaurants, etc. Then these retailers were further classified into three groups based on the NOVA categorization. And this was done based on the prevalent food sold within the retailer. So for example, if a retailer was mainly selling uh, processed and ultra-processed food, uh, it was categorized or labeled as unhealthy. And the retailers that were selling a wide range of products spanning across all the NOVA categorization, uh, this would be categorized as mixed, for example, supermarkets. Um, now we also, for food advertisement, a similar classification was followed. So food advertisement was first classified based on the type of food item that is promoted within the advertisement. So for example, fresh frozen fruits and vegetables, carbonated beverages, cakes, etc. And these were further uh, classified into the three groups that were derived from NOVA. So for example, an, an advertisement that only included um, ultra processed food would be classified as unhealthy. And an, adver an advertisement that includes both healthy and unhealthy uh, food items will, will be classified or was classified as mixed. Now for the analysis, we conducted our analysis using the NOVA grouping. However, we do have the more detailed uh, typology and we could run all the analysis using this more uh, detailed data. Now for the assessment of our outcome, which is a little deep, uh, anthropometric measurements, including height and weight were taken and overweight and obesity were assessed according to the WHO 2007 growth standards. Now, we also collected information on covariates and important covariates. So child, parents, and school level covariates were all uh, collected through structured questionnaire. This will be described in more details in model number three, but I just wanted to mention that we had this covariate and that they were included in our model. Now moving to the result and discussion part. I will start with a quick uh, summary of our sample. So we were able to map the neighborhood of all the 50 schools in Greater Tunis. However, we, were, we only mapped um, the neighborhood of 34 out of 47 schools in Greater Beirut. And this was due to security and safety reasons, as in some areas in uh, Beirut, we were not given permission to collect information. Uh, the median count for food retailers per school was 64 retailers per school in Greater Tunis and 65 retailers per school in Greater Beirut. As for food advertisement, the median count was 36 ads per school in Tunis and 47 ads per school in Greater Beirut. Uh, as you can see, the number are very close. We just have um, a slightly higher number of ads per school in Lebanon as in Beirut, in Greater Beirut as compared to Greater Tunis. So as mentioned before, these retailers and advertisements were classified into the three groups, healthy mix and unhealthy based on the NOVA. 
So what did we find? Uh, I'm going to start with Greater Tunis. So here in the map, each circle indicates a school. The size of the circle is proportionate to the density of food retailers or food advertisements. So higher, um, so bigger circle indicates a higher density. And the, the different colors indicate the types of retailers or advertisements. So red indicates unhealthy, orange mixed, and green healthy. So on the right, we have food advertisements. On the left, we have food retailers. So we can clearly see that the predominant color um, in both maps is the red color, which underlines the massive predominance of unhealthy retailers and advertisements. So in total, 60% of retailers and advertisements were labeled as unhealthy in greater bonus. Uh, also, we can see that the, the circle are bigger for, for retailer as compared to advertisement, because as mentioned before, we have a higher density of retailers around school than advertisement. Moving to Greater Beirut, we can see the same pattern. We can see a predominance of unhealthy food retailers and food advertisement also in Greater Beirut. So 60% of retailers and 70% of advertisements were labeled as unhealthy in Greater Beirut, and we can see the predominance of the red color. Also here, the density of retailers are a bit higher than that of advertisement because the circles are different for food retailers. Next, we decided to zoom in on advertisement to explore the most frequent items promoted in Greater Beirut and Greater Tunis. So this figure presents the frequency of the different types of uh, food items advertised in both Greater Tunis and Greater Beirut. Uh, the dark blue corresponds to the result of Greater Tunis and the light blue corresponds to the result of Greater Beirut. So we can see that savory sorted snacks and more specifically potato chips were the most advertised item in Lebanon. So around 27% of food items advertised in Greater Beirut are potato chips versus less than 5% in Greater Tunis. Now, apart from potato chips, we see that carbonated beverages and sugar-sweetened beverages, as well as sweets, sugar, cake, chocolate, etc., were the items most frequently advertised in those um, contexts. Now I'm going to move to the second part of the results section, which pertains to the association between food environment and uh, so food environment in schools and children with status. So these are the preliminary results from greater tunis that pertains to food retailers. The remaining analysis and the analysis for greater Beirut are still ongoing. Uh, so first, a quick description of the prevalence of obesity. This, this is going to be described in more detail in web, webinar number three. For the time being, this is a quick overview. So we have here the weighted percentage and the different BMI categories in dark blue for greater Tunis and in uh, light blue for greater Beirut. We found that the prevalence of overweight and obesity to be particularly high in both contexts, reaching 36% in greater Tunis and 41% in greater Beirut. Now, uh, we wanted to look whether there is an association between the density of food retailers and uh, childhood obesity. For this, we conducted a multi-level logistic regression, uh, so multi-level to be able to um, account for the nested data and to be able to take into consideration the so clustering of schools. Our main exposure was the density of unhealthy retailers that were categorized in different shape, low, medium, and high. So our outcome, as I mentioned, was obesity. And we adjusted for potential covariates uh, or potential confounders, and these were identified based on a directed attitude graph. So we found that the odds of obesity was higher um, in neighborhoods uh, with medium or high density of unhealthy, in actually school neighborhoods with medium and high density of unhealthy retailers as compared to low density with odds ratio of 1.6 and 1.7 respectively. And as I mentioned before, this was this reached statistical significance. And we can find here the different uh, variables that we used to in the model. So this graph uh, also illustrates how obesity, um, it actually it illustrates the same idea, how when we are basically increasing uh, with increase in the density of unhealthy retailers, so when moving from one to child to the other, the probability of, of obesity or the likelihood of obesity also increases, and this is basically a statistically significant increase. 
We also decided to conduct the same uh, analysis using uh, with healthy and mixed retailers as the main exporter. But in both cases, we were not able to find any specific pattern and no significant association was observed. So what could this potentially mean? Um, one explanation of this could be translated into the idea that it's not only important to promote healthy retailers, but it's also very important and even more efficient or effective to limit the proliferation of unhealthy retailers or to limit the availability of unhealthy purchasers. Now, we also wanted to explore whether this increase would change based on um, a socioeconomic characteristic of children and more specifically based on the wealth and parental education. So for this, we tested whether there was an interaction between education and wealth, and we did find a significant interaction. So just to simplify a little bit the graph, um, with increase um, in the density of unhealthy retailers, so when moving from one to a child to the other, we can see that the highest increase is observed uh, among children coming from rich households and low maternal education levels. So basically the dark red line. So here it's the highest increase. And you see that the magnitude of the increase is actually substantial and significant. Now, if we focus on the third chart, so the high density, so school neighborhoods with high density of unhealthy retailers, we can see that the, um, the first two or the highest probability of obesity is observed among children. In both cases coming from rich households with low or medium educational, maternal education level. So here I'm talking also about the second red line. So in other words, we can say that the adverse effect or the negative impact of a school neighborhood with high density of unhealthy retailers was strongest among children from rich households and with low and uh, with low or medium maternal educational level. Now, on the contrary, within the search for child, we can see that the lowest point was observed among children from rich households, but with high maternal educational level, to which is uh, the blue line. So what does this mean? These findings are actually in line with other results conducted in nutrition transition context. One explanation could be that uh, increasing wealth in low and middle income countries, especially at early stage four of the transition, is sought to promote poor dietary habits involving higher consumption of uh, takeaway food and food from fast food restaurants when available. So this would be more pronounced when unhealthy food retailers are abundantly available in the environment. Uh, whereas maybe people from poorer socioeconomic status would re rely on food foods at home. Um, on the other hand, the higher educational level and wealth may protect again the obesogenic effect of unhealthy retailers, as these people are aware about the negative effect of ultra processed foods, and they can afford to buy more expensive and healthier alternatives. However, we do expect, in line with the nutrition transition literature, we do expect that the obesity burden will shift the poorer population as nutrition transition advances and as awareness increases. Now to conclude, we were able to implement a, a rigorous protocol to quantify food environment in two low and middle income countries. And this despite really challenging context with lack of publicly available data, security issues, different classification systems. We, um, we also found unhealthy food retailers and advertising that could be predominant around schools in both contexts, greater fullness and greater variance. We were all, uh, also able to demonstrate that unhealthy food retailer, retailers were associated with obesity among school children in greater points. The next steps would be to develop and implement strategies that aims to improve children's nutrition status. So our findings suggest that this strategy should not only aim to promote healthy food exposure, but should really try to limit and decrease the proliferation of unhealthy exposure. Recommendation can include regulating the urban zoning area around schools, monitoring uh, the quality and type of food products sold by food related retailers around schools. And since we found a predominance of unhealthy food advertisement, we should also think to develop policies for food advertising that are in line with the recent WHO recommendation that could include mandatory food labeling, prohibiting advertisement in close distance to school, et cetera. Finally, I want to share with you some of the research outputs that we have developed from this study. So these have been shared with school staff, parents, and children. It includes infographics um, of the main results and videos for children and parents. 
Uh, links to all these materials can be found in the web page uh, of our project. So you can find this, can, scan the QR code to go directly to our project website. And I just want to mention that these two videos actually use the finding of this component to increase awareness of parents and children regarding unhealthy food exposure. And it also provides advice on how to avoid some. And um, finally, I want to thank the, uh, the whole CAVE team because none of this would have been possible without them. Uh, and I wanted to particularly thank the data collector of the neighborhood mapping component. And just to mention that all the pictures in this presentation were taken by the data collector and permission to use that picture was granted. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Christelle. Thanks Thank very you. much.